Hello everyone, welcome to GED. Today we are continuing our preview of the initial skill tree releases of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So last time we did the Berserker, let's just move on right down the road to the Clawbringer. So the Clawbringer is basically your paladin-esque style um, trope of D&D. Clawbringers are faithful warriors who bring down thunder and flames upon their enemy with spectral hammer alongside their fire-breathing wyvern companion. The Clawbringers are an order of warriors who seek to bring heroism to the Wonderlands through fire and thunder. While it has been rumored that the Clawbringers are born with dragon blood in their veins, our legal scholars can either confirm or deny blatant heresy. You know what? Let's just talk about the game mechanics. Okay, so... We're just going to move down to the passive. Their class feat is a Wyvern Companion. The Clawbringer is accompanied by a Wyvern Companion that flies through the environment and attacks with its fire, breath, and claws. Any increase to the Fate Maker's damage also apply to Companions. So basically, it's a scaling Wolf and Saint, like Borderlands 2, uh, Wilhelm. And I've always had a special place in my heart or the wolf and saint mechanics uh, if this is a good ai if this wyvern has a good ai scheme from the developers and this has the potential to basically be a ongoing pet that deals a lot of damage passively to every enemy on the map and let me say this like it never hurts to have an extra friend with you in wonderlands in borderlands in general because when you're in a down state when you're running away from stuff it's still flying out there doing damage and uh i don't know i just feel like as a class the clawbringer is kind of like a i don't know thor-esque dragoon <laughs> let's go into the action skills cleansing flames you summon your hammer and slam it into the ground dealing melee damage and creating a fire nova Fire uh, the Nova does fire damage to nearby enemies. I don't like this right here. Melee damage. I mean, uh, it's, again, I've said this in the previous videos. Melee damage has yet to prove itself in Wonderlands that it's going to be a good mechanic. Because, yes, weapons have damage values and there's probably legendary weapons and amazing weapons that come out to play. But melee damage as it stands right now it seems weak, seems undertuned. Uh, all the demos just don't make it appealing. The next one, Storm Dragon's Judgment. The Fate Maker summons their hammer and hurls it, dealing lightning ability damage to all it touches. It sticks wherever it lands and deals lightning melee damage to every second for all nearby enemies. The Fate Maker can recall it and dam damage enemies again as it returns. So, I don't know. This ability actually seems pretty cool. It's like a ranged Thor's hammer, flies out, does some AoE damage. You recall it, it hits him on the way back. It's actually pretty, pretty good. Um, as a nuke, as a basically uh, extra grenade style ability. But the problem is, again, lightning melee damage. That, that melee word keeps creeping in there every chance it gets. So I mean, they better show us some amazing melee abilities or melee tuning to make those really keep pace with the rest of the classes in the game that don't use melee abilities going into the passive skills oath of fire the fate maker deals bonus fire damage with their guns and wyvern companion okay it's basically a mose ability you're you're pumping out extra fire damage on your your gun and your pet this is good because it allows you to use a weapon of a different element and still retain your fire damage. So you're doing, you know, you could get like a lightning weapon to break shields and then you still have some fire damage on it to melt health bars. Radiance. The Fate Maker gains increased ward capacity. Okay, basic defense ability. The Fate Maker deals bonus damage with Oath of Thunder. Lightning damage on melee attacks. If you're going melee build, like a Berserker slash Clawbringer. You can have your wyvern and yourself deal melee lightning damage. Mm. I don't know. Out of this tree, I would probably say Oath of Fire is probably the best one there. I mean, melee build maybe. Um, still pending. Dragon Aura. Tier 2. 
The Fate Maker is surrounded by a dragon aura that grants them and themselves and their allies increased elemental damage. That sounds absolutely amazing. Depending on how good this scales, everything needs extra elemental damage in the game. So this is an excellent, excellent ability. Uh, dedication, the Fate Maker gains increased action school, skill cooldown rate. So you can throw your hammer more or slam the ground more. The higher your ward, the greater the bonus. So um, in the previous tree, when you get more ward on your character, you can you know have faster cooldown on your action skill. Rebuke. The Fate Maker gains damage reduction from all attacks, and additionally, all allies near the Fate Maker gain a chance to reflect damage back as lightning damage. Okay, so basic defense. I mean, if you want to make a tank build, you could buff up your ward, you could buff up your damage reduction, and just be full on tank. But man, I recommend <laughs> the Clawbringer. You could just totally go ham on the offensive elemental damage, both in fire and thunder. So, tier 3. Blast Hamid's Favor, 1 point max. When you kill an enemy, you get an orb, a fire orb, that seeks out a new enemy and deals fire ability damage. Killing an enemy with a melee attack, vice versa, summons a lightning orb that seeks out an enemy. Okay, so uh, this is literally a Myra's orb ability from Borderlands 3. And uh, let me just say that that ability has never, ever impressed me. The orbs are usually too slow, they're usually too weak, and unless this is tuned very heavily, I'm worried about this tier 3 one point ability for Clawbringer just because the fire orb really has not proven itself to be a useful skill in the previous game. Why would it prove itself here unless they, again, modify it a lot? I don't know why this is here. I mean, eh, it is what it is. Tier 4. Now here's where you start to really come into some cool stuff. Because again, the wyvern is like a uh, wolf and saint, and it's flying around, it's doing slashing attacks, it's doing its uh, breath attack, and these are a lot of additions in tier 4. We start off with firebolt. The wyvern companion will occasionally shoot firebolts at enemies, causing damage in an area and leaving a splat. Additionally, the fate maker gains gun damage. So this is a double whammy right here. We get, a, we get an ability from the wyvern, and we get the gun damage. Now, I believe there was a, an ability like this in Borderlands 2 where a uh, wolf would literally bombard the enemy with missiles, and that would leave a pool of fire beneath them. So uh, I would give this an A+, because it's a good ability, and if it works exactly like I think it's going to work, it's going to be good. Friends to Flame, the Fate Maker's Wyvern's companion gains increased damage. So you're literally just gaining passive damage on your pet. Uh, that is actually really nice. Because again, uh, the pet's going to be flying around, it's going to be blasting stuff, it's going to be slashing, um, and scaling with your damage. So yeah, there you go. Storm Breath. The Wyvern Companion gains a Lightning Breath that will arc, and the Fate Maker gains damage reduction. It's only one point, but that's also really, really good for one point. Um, if it's got a lightning shot that arcs between enemies and you got a damage reduction, win-win for both you and your pet. This whole tree, I think when tier 4, uh, when Clawbringers reach tier 4, they're really going to be popping off. Like, that's where they really come into their own with these abilities right here. Tier 5, we get awe. No shock, but just awe. After dealing fire damage, the Fate Maker gains increased critical hit damage. So again, if you have your level 1 fire damage on your weapon, you gain increased crit, just basically. And after dealing lightning damage, you get crit hit chance. So fire and lightning, you know, you're getting crit damage, crit hit. Um, if you have a lightning weapon, and you're also shooting fire out of your passive, I think this could scale really, really crazily. Uh, I don't know, we'll have to see exactly how that interacts with guns that are, that are lightning based. Uh, and of course you can do melee weapons that have fire on them for, or uh, yeah, 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 melee weapons have fire and get both those passives rolling too, crit hit, crit damage. Indomitable, when you enter Save Your Soul, the down state, you will refuel your ward and deal bonus lightning damage. So basically you don't die, it's a free save. And there's been several characters throughout Borderlands history that has 
had a free save from death, and it's always been good. It's always just been a standard. The bonus lightning damage is kind of icing on the cake for that one. And then we come to their capstone storm smite. Whenever the fate make activates, whenever the fate maker activates an action skill, they call down elemental bolts that deal fire or lightning to all nearby enemies. Please, please say that this has like almost a map wide range. Like I'm not, I'm not talking about the full map, but I'm talking about at least like a 30 to 40 yard radius. Because if you're using your action skill and stuff's raining down passively on enemies um, wherever they're hiding, you know, far away from you, then this has the potential to be an amazing capstone. But if it's just like a very tiny area very close to you and you're not a melee build, it's going to peter out really quick and disappoint a lot of people. I mean, uh, we'll see uh, when we get the full game what happens here on their tier 6. So overall, I think the uh, the Clawbringer here has a very solid multi-class potential, and I personally am going to be using the Clawbringer, as stated in a previous video, as my secondary multi-class, just because I want that Wyvern, which acts as a Satan Wolf uh, jet fighter mechanic, just flying around blasting stuff. However, uh, if you're maining Clawbringer, I think they're still very, very solid. They have a lot of damage buffs, a lot of cooldowns, very tanky skills and um yeah they fit well into almost any multi-class so good for the clawbringer very solid design here may not look impressive at first glance but i'm sure their skills are going to really mesh well with the entire gamut of the classes anyways give me your thoughts and i'll see you in the next one